Hello and welcome to Pivot Pro YouTube video series. Topic of the video, how to create custom event in a Pivot Pro Tag Manager. So what we're gonna learn? We'll explain what are custom events and we're gonna zoom in into the custom event parameters, category, action, name, and value. In analytics, we'll be calling them dimensions. Then we're gonna discuss a few things we should consider before deciding on a structure and values of these parameters, which may greatly impact the analysis of custom events in the analytics module. Then we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process of setting up a custom event using Click as our example. And we're gonna end with a quick overview of the debugging process of our tag. So let's dive in. Custom events are custom interactions that we track in Pivot Pro. We can use Tag Manager to start tracking these custom interactions, i.e. custom events on your website. In the analytics module, we use custom events or and unique custom events metrics to track the number of times those events took place. And we would use dimensions, custom event category, custom event action, and optionally custom event name and custom event value to describe them. What do I mean by describe them? Let's take a page event, for example. So website page is loaded on the screen of a visitor's device. Whenever that happens, we count the number of times a page was loaded using metrics, page use or unique page use. And then we can look into specific page URLs using page URL dimension. Alternatively, we may as well use page title dimension instead of page URL. In any case, those two dimensions, page URL and page title, are examples of how page event can be described, or in other words, provide us with a context for page event. And it is similar with custom event. So let's take a submit button click as an example of a custom event that we would want to track. When someone clicks on the button, we could be sending information, i.e. parameters, or should I say custom event dimensions values. So in this case, for category, it could be click. And for action, it could be CTA. And for name, it could be submit. And here we see an example of a report with which we could see our example event data. Take a closer look at our report. Notice that there are other custom events with the same values for category and action, but different values for custom event name. It's because we can use fixed values for certain custom event parameters. In this case, click and CTA are fixed values for category and action, or we can use dynamic values, depending on the context. In this case, the context is button's name, and the values are not only submit, but also contact us, join now, and so on. We'll talk about it in just a moment, once we get to the setup part. Okay, but now let's get to the setup part. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add two custom events instead of one, because what I want to track, I want to track all button clicks on this very website, which is our demo website. Now, why two custom events? Because we have two types of buttons. We have black button, like two of those. An example of a gray button is this logout button. There's more buttons on the website, but let's just keep Think simple and narrow it down to this one page, loans page, so we can easily have it all on one page to test things. Before I'm gonna add my first tag, I would like to first show you the variable that I'm about to add to my tag, which will track button values dynamically. By dynamically, we mean that whenever somebody clicks on this button or this button or at this button, we're gonna extract the text from within that button. So in the case of this button, that would be log out or get your estimate here in case of this one. And we're gonna hold that value and assign it to our custom event category or action or name. Uh, we're gonna decide on that, which in a second, but first let's take a look at that variable. Now, if you're not familiar with the concepts of variables, triggers, or tags, I would strongly encourage you to watch the video called Introduction to Pivot Pro Tag Manager, where I go over the basics and foundations of our Pivot Pro Tag Manager. So that way you'll be, you will know, you'll be able to uh, easily connect the dots of what I'm doing here uh, if you haven't used any other tag manager in the past. But let's take a look at our variable. So I'm gonna to go to the variable tab, which is where you will find all different custom variables. Mine is called Pivic Pro Global Click Text, which is a custom JavaScript variable. And it's basically a plain English, it can be understood in a plain English. So if element that was clicked exists, uh, return the inner text. Uh, if we don't have inner text, we gonna extract text content. So either 
of those two. And then we're going to hold it and assign it to custom event category, action, and name. And that's it when it comes to this variable. Let's get to the tag. Okay, let's add our first tag. So I'm going to click on add a tag. And then in here from the tag templates, we need to choose custom event tag template. And I'm going to hit next. Now, first, let me add the names. Um, so tag name, block button clicks, category, I'm going to add clicks, action, block button. And as a name, I'm going to use the variable that I've shown you already. So if you remember that variable, its name was pivot pro, pivot pro global click text. That's the one. In another tab, let's create another custom event. Later, I'm going to tell you what we are doing here. So I'm going to click on custom event, hit next. And this time I'm going to call my tag gray button clicks. Uh, I'm going to keep the same category and I'm going to change the action to gray button. And again, the same variable. So we've got now two tags, very similar. Now, why I did what I did. So first, the name of a tag, which is black button clicks and gray button clicks. Well, we used two different names because we want to differentiate between those two different tags within Tag Manager and later in a debugger. So we recognize which one fires when and whether it fires appropriately. But then you may ask, why do we have different values for action under this tag and this tag, gray button and black button? It's because we want to have data granularity and differentiate in the analytics between black and gray button clicks. Uh, and that's why we need two different tags. One that fires for black buttons. So that's one trigger and one tag and one that fires for gray button. That's a one tag and one trigger for that type of buttons. Alternatively, we could have one tag and one trigger that fires that tag for all button colors or button types. But in this case, we would need to, if you want, still want to have this granularity, instead of fixed value for action, we would need to use some sort of variable. And this variable would need to recognize and assign the appropriate value, again, color, uh, for different button clicks. It obviously would require some JavaScript logic, just like with the uh, click text variable. But if you're comfortable writing a simple JavaScript code, then you may as well use just one tag. Either way is fine. I'm just showing you that you may want to use variable, or you may just add two tags to send different values. If it's easier for you to add two tags, then use two tags. If it's easier for you to create a simple JavaScript because you want to limit the number of tags, then you can follow that way too. Before we get to our triggers for our two tags, I would like to say a few general things about category, action, name, and value. When it comes to category and action, those are necessary to be used with each and every custom event tag. Name and value are optional. It's up to us how much context we want to provide to each and every custom event that is taking place on our website. Then category, action, and name should be a string, i.e. type of data that is a combination or could be combination of letters, numbers, and characters. Obviously, it could be just letters, but basically it will be treated as text, uh, whereas value should be a float, uh, a number. This is important from the perspective of analytics and the way, for example, uh, what filter conditions we will use there. So like for value, we will have numerical conditions like greater than or equal, uh, say, three. And for text, it could be so category, action, and name, so strings. Uh, it could be something like custom event category contains XYZ3 or whatever the, the, the value. Basically, it can be letters and numbers. Finally, if you need more string values, you could also add a custom dimension along with your custom event, having already defined the uh, custom dimension in the analytics and perhaps having appropriate variable to be used with that custom dimension. So you would choose the dimension that we define in the analytics and then assign the fixed value or any sort of variable along with it. So before we get to triggers, let's just add our tags. So that's the first one and then another one. So we've got the tags saved. Now let's get to triggers. So let's start with the 
plug button clicks trigger. Instead of adding existing trigger, uh, I want to show you how to add a trigger. So I'm going to choose add a trigger. If you already added an uh, existing trigger, you could potentially choose it from the list in here. I'm going to use a new trigger. Uh, in my case, obviously, because we're dealing with clicks, I'm going to choose a click trigger type. I'm going to hit next. In here, I'm going to add black button clicks. Uh, and uh, I'm going to leave wait for tags before loading the next page as it is. And I'm gonna here choose not for all clicks, but for when the conditions are met. And in here, notice that I have few options. So I have built-in variables that capture the value of elements, click ID, click URL, and I can use these values conditions to trigger my tag. So let's see what we have available. I'm gonna right click on the element and I'm gonna hit inspect. This is how you enter dev tools of a Chrome browser. Now in different browsers, that process might be slightly different. In my case, that's how we do it. So uh, you would need to sort of make this um, access dev tools in a nutshell. Uh, so let's click on that. Now notice that my button was selected. We can see BTN, BTN primary, Jumbotron BTN, BTN inline, BTN left. Uh, so we have uh, a few classes. First one is BTN. I would reckon that this is the class that is common for all, all buttons. Let's check that. So I'm gonna click on this element again. I'm gonna select logo button. Yes, I was right. So BTN is a class that is shared well, with all buttons. Mm. Now let's check what is a class that is being shared among all black buttons. BTN primary. BTN primary. Okay, so the, it seems like the, but, the black buttons have BTN primary class in them. But let's check with the gray button. Okay, see, BTN secondary. So gray button is a secondary button. So that's how we could potentially distinguish between black and a blue button. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click again on one of those black buttons and I'm going to copy just this part. So BTN and BTN primary as it is. And I'm going to add it here. Click class contains like that. Now I'm having here a presumption that all buttons, all other buttons, block buttons have this class BTN, BTN primary. I don't want to get into the process of checking whether that's true or not. But that's how I, what is my presumption. If it was that was your website, you would probably uh, you would probably know or you could check with your web developer if that is the case. In my case, I will presume that for the simplicity of this uh, very example. So I already have my click class contains BTN primary for black button clicks. I'm gonna add it and I'm gonna save it. Now it's turn for the other tag, which is gray button clicks. So I need to do the same, add a trigger, click trigger, create button clicks, conditions, and I know what class. I just need to copy it just like I did a moment ago. So I'm going to right click on the this very button and I'm going to copy and paste into the condition. So click class contains BTN, BTN secondary, which is condition for grade buttons. So let's add it and let's save it. Now we could add custom events with different triggers, not necessarily click triggers. Like for example, scroll events would use scroll triggers, uh, but I'm not going to explain all different trigger types in this video. I'll record another video just with triggers and I'll drop the link in the description below once it's ready. Uh, but now let's get to the debug mode. Okay, so let's click on the debug mode. So once I click on the debug mode, it opens the website with this sidebar. The sidebar is also a place where I can see the list of all different tags. Those who are, which are blue are uh, basically fired and you can see how many times they were fired. And when I was talking about the naming tags, the name goes, uh, allows to differentiate different tags within the tags list, but also in a Debugger. So if I'm going to scroll down, I can see black button clicks, not fired yet because I haven't clicked on any button and gray button, which is here, gray button clicks. So I can see the side of a great button here, 
let's have a look whether it's going to get fired. Yes, it got fired. I've been re redirected to another page and I can see I've got the block button. Let's check block button attack, whether it's going to get fired. Yeah, it got fired. I can click on apply now and can see that it got fired again. Now I can see gray button again. So let's scroll a little and see the gray button tags yet again. So I can see it fires. And uh, now if you want to see what sort of script was added to the website, this is the actual script. So we can see pack push, track event, clicks, gray button, and we can see the variable in here. And we can also see the triggers, right? So we can see triggers, click trigger, and a class that was assigned to that very trigger. Uh, another thing that we can do, we can also go to the event log. So if I were to click on say black button here, let's go to loans page so we can see the button properly. So if I'm gonna click on this button, uh, we're gonna record an event. So right now, if I scroll, I, I record scroll events. If I click, I'm gonna record a click event. And that click is here. Now we can see that we scrolled and there were other events in the meantime, but I can see click events here. So if I were to click on this one, I can see what are tags that are associated with that very click. So we can see have a black button click, um, which is associated with it. And I can check the variables. And to check the variables, I can actually see the class that is associated with this very button click. So you can see BTN, BTN primary, which is also the condition for all black button clicks, the BTN, BTN primary. That's an alternative way going into debugger and check those events is an alternative way to check the classes that are associated with a particular click instead of using DevTools. So if you don't want to use DevTools, you can always use a debugger. Another thing that we could do is to check the values of our click text variable. So let's go to debug mode yet again. Let's go to loans page and let's cl click on a get in touch button. Okay, so let's click on that. And now let's go to analytics. So I'm gonna open it in another tab. And then let's go to settings and then tracker debugger. And here we need to find our own session. I know that my session is here and I'm gonna switch newest to oldest. So I clicked on a get in touch button, which was recorded here. It is also recorded via heat map, a custom event. And that got us to the contact page, which is where we're at right now. Uh, but in here, the difference is, is that I can actually see the button that was clicked, which was a get in touch button right? Uh, I could not see it in a debugger because it shows us the uh, associated with this very tag variable. Uh, so that's another way to test your tag. In, in my case, that was clicks, black button, get in touch. One last step is publishing our tags, black button clicks and gray button clicks tags. Because the fact that we've seen the tags firing in a debugger and data coming through properly in a tracker debugger, that does not mean that any data for those tags is actually being sent to Pivik Pro database. We need to publish those tags for that to happen. We can see that those tags that are published are green. Have, they all have green, full green circle. Now those that are active, but not published, uh, have a green circle, but it's empty inside. Some of them are uh, gray, so this one and this one are gray. That means they are uh, inactive and unpublished. Anyway, once we're ready, it's also a good practice to check change log to see if we are not publishing tags that are not ready to be published. And once we check that on their change log, uh, we can click on a publish button. So let's do that and let's hit publish button. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our channel. Check the description below to find some useful links like free Pivik Pro signup page, community forum page, and links to related videos. Until next time.